Dear guests, we begin the last part of uh, Games Gathering Forum, and uh, our speaker is Filip Palashik. Please. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Filip Polashek. I'm from uh, Bratislava. I work in Pixel Federation, but I will give you more information about myself a little bit later. Uh, what I would like to talk about uh, tonight, today, uh, how to take over a new team as their lead. Uh, it happens that uh, I have a very recent experience on this matter as uh, I was transferred to a totally new project within the company six, seven months ago. So also some uh, lessons learned that I gathered. Uh, but first of all, I would like to uh, invite you, please raise your hands, whoever had experience uh, transition to a new team, being it a new uh, company, being it a new part of the company. Okay, how many of you have uh, experienced this on a level that you were appointed their leads? Okay, so uh, you see, what I was trying to demonstrate is that uh, nearly half of you have already experienced uh, this, this subject from uh, at least one of the sides. Uh, whenever you come to a new company, whenever you come to a new project, to a new part of people, you uh, are trying to, to fit. And uh, some of uh, these uh, points or uh, lessons learned are also transferable for every of this moment. All. Or I believe at least. So without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce myself a little bit more. As I said, I'm Filip Polashek. I'm a senior producer at Pixel Federation, the biggest uh, game uh, developer in Slovakia, staged here in Bratislava. Uh, I have a seven plus years of managerial experience. It happens that it's all from the entertainment industry. Before my uh, entering before me entering the gaming industry, I worked as a poker manager. Uh, I was responsible for setting up a poker room within a newly built casino from scratch. Uh, I'm a gaming junkie, and I admit it. Uh, I started uh, play games, being it uh, board games, card games, uh, video games, as, as far as I can remember, like three, four years old. Whatever was available, I played it. I then uh, get more into uh, real-time strategies. Uh, as a long-time chess player, it was a natural course of events. And then I settled with uh, Magic the Gathering, the trading card game for almost 25 years. <laughs> and I'm still playing it now, thanks to the port to the mobile. Uh, also, I'm a family guy with wife and three lovely kids. And this is my goal, not to look like this at work. Okay, so uh, what's today's uh, talk will be more about. Uh, I believe that there are several steps. Uh, uh, every lead that is taking over a new project, new team should do even before he starts on the position. Uh, I called it, or let's call it a due diligence. It's something you should prepare, you should do whenever you have time, and the better you do this part, all the other parts will be easier for you. So after that, let's assume that you come to the project first steps. I mean, what probably you should do, or not you should do, what I try to do uh, within the first month. Your vision. Uh, after the month, it starts to starts to be more and more important of you to becoming a leader not only by the definition of the company or the transfer but also as uh, your personality and i believe that that is not possible to do with without your vision of what you want to achieve with the project uh, next you have to show their show your value to the team if you it's 
I think a very known fact that it says that uh, respect is earned, not given. This is about it. You cannot expect anyone to respect you or follow you if they don't see why. And uh, as I said, very recent experience from the transfer. And some key takeaways before the Q&A. I really, really ask you to all ask lots of questions. I'd be more than happy to answer. Okay, so what's this due diligence I speak of? Uh, what would you, what would be your guess? Anyone? What's the steps you need to do before even transferring to the project? Okay. Do, do you do your homework? That's a very, very good answer. And you will see why uh, a little bit later. Yeah, you have to understand where are you going and what are you expected from you. If you are going to uh, take over a team that is developing a game or an app, play the game, use the app know what it's all about read the documentation every one piece of you can get a, your hands on more you know about the project more you know about the 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 goal of the project gets you closer to understanding it uh, you should definitely know something about uh, the current state of the development that is only measurable by project KPIs and uh, also mainly the trends. It can happen that you uh, raised in within the company to be a stellar crisis manager. So probably you will be transferred to a project that is not in a very good shape at the moment. So even more important is to understand what's the current uh, flow of the project, what is the struggling point, what is working, what is not. Uh, check actual plans. Even projects that are not doing very well at the moment have some plans. Probably they are not very good, because if they will be good, then they will be followed. The project wouldn't be in the bad shape, but there are still valuable information. Prepare questions. Gathering all this information you went through you should be able to ask some very precise questions with a very precise uh, target. What's the information you want to gather? What do you, what's the information you want to get? And if you get all this, prepare some more. Because you need to ask people a lot of questions to understand. Do your homework. That's great summary of what you should do. So first steps, let's take the moment that you came to the office, managed to get to your team, start talking to them. For example, when I was transferred to the new project, I didn't set up my station for two or three weeks. It wasn't that important. I spent nearly all of my daytime work time to sitting next to one, asking questions, trying to understand what their issues on the projects are, what's their blockers, what's anything that I can help them with. Uh, have interviews, send surveys. Uh, this is more about uh, the uh, how big the project is. If you are going to take over a team of let's say 20 25 people it's easy to interview but if you are going to be on a higher scale of the pyramid and you are at the end responsible for let's let's say 100 people it's really hard to talk to them with all so you can use some methods to gather those information understand communication channels that's not only about uh, knowing Where's this? Uh, what's on the Slack or uh, Skype? It's more about uh, what are the flows for 
specific communications, specific uh, workflows, or let's say, uh, how does a bug report come from a client or a user or a gamer through your customer service to your uh, designers and developers to deal with it? If you can understand these communication channels, you can easily find a weak spot, maybe where the bottlenecks are made or uh, if you're looking for, what, let's say, for an answer to some chain reaction, you can go backwards. Uh, try to join meetings that they are already set up for uh, the for the project or for the team. Uh, my advice would be to listen a lot, not trying to to come as a blazing fire and talk a lot. Just listen. Even with the meetings that you are probably not going to attend later on, but you can get the the ideas, you can find and locate issues. Ask those questions. Everyone who gets time on you. This is more on the free note. It is not possible to do all, but it's great to uh, meld the team together. Even, even more so if uh, the team or the project is struggling. I know it's not always possible. Uh, after COVID, we, we have more and more colleagues that are working remotely. But if it is even slightly possible, I recommend you do it. Get to know the team. You cannot lead them if you don't know them. Your vision. What is this vision he's talking about? Uh, it's not, it doesn't need to be something you have made. It doesn't need to be something you have uh, made, of made out of scratch or something completely different from what the team was following before. But it needs to be something that you believe in. It needs to be something that you believe is the best for the project, app, game, team, and you must believe that it's achievable. And you definitely have to have one. Like, it's, to me, it's something that I would wake up, stand up from the bed and don't know what to do today. You have to have a goal. As I said, you can adopt former one, from your processor or create your own if you believe that the one is not sufficient. It's good if you, the vision addresses uh, the team's needs. Uh, it's not only about the goals for the project, but also the goal of the team. This is uh, different. In Pixel, the producer is responsible also for the people development. It is not the case in every company. So if you have something to say, or if you are able to help your people to with their career and their career development, definitely try to set the goals and set it in the vision. Where do you want to have your team at some space at some time? Have a basic roadmap. Uh, this is only very uh, large or a very uh, high level uh, scene. It's mainly what are the steps that are needed now, what are the steps that are needed to be done in a half a year, and what are the steps that needed to be done after that. Uh, if you are done with it, if you have your vision that you believe in, uh, definitely gave the team to the the space to to ask questions. Why did you came up with this version? What was wrong with the with the previous one? Uh, bear in mind that at this point 
it is not crucial for you to to have them buy in you just need one uh you just need to as i said uh, put your knee uh, put your foot in the door so you just need to have them not resend it because as i said before you cannot expect uh, anyone to to uh, respect you and to believe in you if they didn't see what you can what you can do for her if they can see how you can lead them and you didn't have uh, that space for that you're only a month there this is a good vision strong one show what you want to achieve try to make it specific try to make it uh, possible to imagine it's much more easier to to buy into something you can see for yourself than something that is abstract for you now we come to the part and you have to show why it was good for the team and for the project that you were transferred there protect your team there are many changes that might uh, affect your composition of the team that may, may affect uh, the project you need to be someone they can trust they can rely on and protect them from something like anyone from the company blaming them for whatever you should not be uh, making it possible you should be the, the umbrella for them that they can hide if they need it it's not uh it's not about uh trying to get rid of the responsibility but it's protecting them from uh, unnecessary harm you should be the one who is uh, asking them for responsibility who is making them to to talk about their mistakes not anyone else since you should be more uh, familiar with the project with the team with the vibe you should be able to come suggesting changes changes that you believe will be helpful for them for the project that might mean optimizing workflows being it in jira or any other uh, software tool helping the the, the project management this is a part that is uh, only available to some companies that have the producer or a lead in the position uh, responsible for the career growth of uh, the dedicated team. So uh, since it is a case of Pixel Federation, I added there, uh, it's anything from hard skills knowing what their uh, issues are uh, from finding a good conference or a course to pushing them a little bit harder when you see they need it once they know your value once they know and believe that you are helping them and you are there for them they will buy into your vision they will buy in and they will follow you This is, do not, and I repeat, do not become a lead you think you should be. Become a lead they need and the lead they want. It's not about you as a lead, it's about the team. So, recent experience. Uh, I am in Pixel for like five and a half a year now and the transfer came in exactly at five year mark so after five years at uh, Diggy's Adventure I was transferred to the spiritual successor Puzzle Adventure and you guessed right if you think that the project is not in a very good condition 
many things aligned in a bad way, let's say like a trust, catastrophic way. And I was uh, transferred there to try if I can do something with that. Final call was made 10 days before my transfer. It was like I was set to become some kind of uh, uh, counselor or uh, or just a second opinion giver 10 days before. Let's change it a little bit. You have 10 days to pack your things and move to the other part of the company and take this project. If it's not enough, first three weeks after my transfer and after my first day at the team, I received the COVID and I was home for three weeks, unable to be physically present at the firm, at the team's meeting. It's not something you would like to experience, I guarantee. Even with the, the let's say, post-COVID era, uh, when people are more familiar with working uh, uh, remotely and have part of teams working remotely, for me as a producer, it is something that I would like to avoid at all costs. For me, being present to the team to see the the flow, to see the vibe, to try to catch all the nuances is very, very crucial. It's hard to, to know and catch these things of a new project if you are not there. Uh, I had 20 or 22 interviews within the first month, being it all the craft leads like game designers, uh, developers, uh, art lead, being it uh, former producers, being it uh, the board, being it uh, our chief producer officer, being it uh, uh, lead of the supports like community managers, Q and A. So it's it was like that for let's say month has twenty work days. It was in average one interview a day. I read all the Slack team channels a month back. This is an overkill, don't do that. Uh, I was trying to understand what were the what were they talking about? What are they focusing at, uh, uh, at the moment? But looking at uh, looking at it back, I think that it doesn't need to be all the channels and one two weeks is enough. Like, it's up to you if you think it can be beneficial for you. But I think that uh, mm, the communication and the flow that is repeated week after week is somehow rewarding. And it bears information that there are nowhere else. After that, I did what I suggested. Uh, prepared my vision. Unfortunately, I was not convinced by the former one, so I nearly scraped like 90% of the former vision and presented my own. And it was not good. The team was not very open to the change, so I asked them, do you believe that if we would follow the vision you had before, we would reach your goal? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, what's your goal? Having a good game, what does it mean? The game that we would like, wrong. Only then I just realized that they were trying to answer very wrong question at the very beginning. They were trying to have a good game and they didn't know what it meant. So when we started the, from that point, we came to the conclusion what the good game should be. And it's something that we can, 
have our target audience happy with. It's not something that we should be happy with. After that, the vision started making more and more sense to them, and they were able to see what are the benefits compared to the former one. Next month, uh, I focused on most common issues, and by this I meant that even though that the team was working together for almost three years, they didn't know that some of the issues they are experiencing is same for nearly all of them, because they didn't talk about it. So this was the low-hanging fruit to deal with at the very beginning, and it helped me to show my value. How can I help the team? Because the work was easier for them after that. This is more like fallout of that. Because if you go step by step, these things start to unfold on their own. So, uh, I was trying to gamify the key takeaways and I inspired myself with uh, the values of the Pixel, Gener uh, Pixel Federation. Uh, we have it uh, placed in a games with G, uh, get shit done, don't be an asshole, master your craft, enjoy work and speak your mind. So that's Pixel Federation's values. My key takeaways, get to know the project, do your homework, ask questions, talk to people, make a vision they can buy in eventually, earn their trusts, and support each other at the end. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. And I welcome you to ask any question that I will be trying to answer. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Uh, you. And a quick question, quick question. Maybe you had some tips uh, for how to get your team's trust, because I think it's the most important uh, thing in management team, the team. Uh, yes, uh, managing a team without the trust is something that is uh, very hard, very ungrateful. So uh, I do not believe that there is uh, one ultimate way how to get it. Uh, but maybe uh, your your way. Yeah. And uh, not only trust, I'm uh, wondering about and also respect, sorry. Uh, trust. If you can be trusted and you can deliver on your promises, the respect is uh, is something that you will earn uh, as a side product, I would say. Like, trust, uh, from my point of view, is something that if someone said some confidential information to you or uh, entrusted you with uh, something that he's uh, experiencing outside uh, the work and you keep on that information, not sharing it with Keep anyone. The yes. Uh -huh. so then you earn the their trust. <laughs> and uh, the respect, respect is only by the delivery on your promises, on your plans. If you plan right and deliver all some all the parts that uh, you commit yourself to, you get the respect because you are someone who can. Uh, who knows how much you can deliver, you know how to deliver, and you deliver. And how to uh, earn the trust? Uh, one thing is that the, to keep the secrets secrets. Uh, second is uh, be there for them. Like uh, it's all the small things, like the for colleague with the uh, former presentation. It's it goes from attending meetings on time to keeping secrets. Like every step, every single iteration you do with your team or any given team member, 
gives you or lo lose your trust. And you promise that uh, people will appreciate <laughs> this because on my last job, uh, it it doesn't work for me. I was there for them, and uh, I always um, support and keep their secrets, but they act like like they don't have trust and beliefs in me. Yes, uh, that's really frustrating. I can rely to that, and I'm really sorry you have to experience that. It's unfair. Uh, Yes, uh, giving uh, recognition is something that earns you both, but only if it's a recognition uh, given when due. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, I want to ask you of uh, how uh, much bureaucracy do you have in your company, and uh, is it possible to reduce it somehow? Uh, to answer that, uh, like, what kind of bureaucracy you mean? Can you specify more? For example, a simple decision of uh, how uh, a little thing uh, needs to be in. Uh, I would uh, follow the the advice uh, from my colleague from former presentation that it really depends on the magnitude of the of the issue. Like we are trying to keep. Uh, more to the like garage type of a firm or a project teams with okay this is something that i can done in five minutes i will not spend hour even making a ticket in jira mm -hmm. so uh i have a great trust in my team that they are able to to determine which is which which doesn't need their uh complete documentation and can be implemented because they know what's the issue and can fix it and what's bigger than them and needs to be somehow written down of course we are uh, trying to uh, keep the loop and check if uh, we are not missing something that we consider that should be documented and they are thinking that it's not that big uh, and yes, there's always a play, always a way, or you should always look for the possibility to decrease the amount of bureaucracy you are handling. Being it uh, with uh, trying to put two processes together or simply just ditching one if it's not needed anymore. Like from my own experience, I think that the most amount of uh, extra bureaucracy that is not needed is something that was some time, some very time ago needed, and now we are doing it just because we did it in the past. And if you can uh, locate this kind of, uh, of processes and ditch them, you will be always getting better on your time that you spent more on the development, more on your team development than on the processes themselves. Uh, yes, you need to talk with myself. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Philip. Your presentation was well structured and easy to follow. Thank you. And um, I have a question regarding what you shared about the vision and the roadmap you presented to the team. So how at the end did you manage to sell your vision and to tell your developers that the question they should be answering is not that should be that should be doing a game that they need but the, the game the customer need so how did you find this balance because i would imagine that they would push back no like we should enjoy the game this is a game we're making so it should be fun for us right so how did you find this balance uh i had some kind of uh, luck and i admit it i chose uh, for the path of trying to navigate them very back to what they need what they think they want to achieve and then try them to find an answer to how would it uh, benefit the company or even themselves and when they came to that that i will be having a game that i like and i can play it and i said like yeah for three months because I, after three months and after three months of uh, red numbers in the books, 
probably there will be a call to shut down the project, shut down the game, or completely rehaul it, and you will be not with that what you want. And yeah, I had a luck that they were able to realize that there is some merit in what I'm saying. Uh, if this wouldn't work, my next plan or next move would be to uh, to try to show it, show it on uh, other projects that we have in the company that might uh, experience something similar. Then talk to guys that uh, used to have a similar or the same uh, idea approach and try them to show them why they changed and understood that uh, the game is not for them, but for the for target audience. And the uh, last call would be that I had in my pocket was that, okay, I tried them. What games do you play? What games do you like? And from my expertise, I would say that 70% of them would show some a AAA title and 20% would show some uh, synchronous multiplayer or something. And I would ask them, are you sure you can do this? So it's not about trying to argument, try to navigate themselves to ask themselves the questions. To, sh to stood them to see them in the mirror that why is their question not so good or their answer to the question not so good. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Philip. Really great presentation. Thank and you very your much. Your values really resonate. So I believe your company is really lucky to have you. And uh, yes. I have a question. So, Related to new project and um, the pressure you had on the way to get up to speed, because uh, so far it required a lot of time to go retrospectively and uh, check channels uh, to go and do your homework. So, if you were lucky to have time, it's one thing. But if not, uh, I would like to hear your experience or at least your approach, where you focus on and uh, what would you do if you have really approached a milestone in your project and you still don't have time to go up to speed. So what would be your approach? Or if you had it experienced, what did you do? Uh, I would, uh, great question. I would uh, divide this into uh, two different uh, scenarios. One is that I had experienced at this point and one is the other one that you might you might experience whenever you are changing companies so in this very specific scenario i had time because uh in pixel federation we believe and my job is to not be needed to do work so i can have my uh work time ready whenever some uh, some issue occurs to deal with it immediately so since I was on a well-established project before that, being there for three years as a lead producer, we had all these issues very well documented. We were following our plan and we were quite okay with it, addressing only uh, ad hoc issues. So I spent my work time, started document uh, reading the documentation starting talking people starting to checking uh, power bi with uh, all the kpis it was to me i understand it as a this is something that ad hoc occurs and this is something i have my my spare time in work ready for so for me it was just like a normal issue the only difference was that this was on the other project uh in the scenario when you are uh, coming to a different company that you are probably uh asked to do uh address all your former work to some other colleagues to who make manuals and etc cetera, etc cetera. it will be harder but 
in this scenario, you have not that much amount of information available to understand, to dig into. So probably you will be able to play the game or use the app because you just download it from the App Store. But you won't be able to read documentation on uh, internal Confluence or other software databases. You won't be able to go through the Slack channel. <laughs> and that's what I think that different scenario uh, requires different amount of homework to be done. So I think that it is manageable in both of them. And that is something that you should be, why you should be trying to uh, be a lead with some kind of a capacity on doing ad hoc work. It sounds like uh, for you, it would not be uh, a problem to stay like 20 hours a day if you need to catch up. At least you sounds like this kind of uh, a person. I used to be that guy, but I really try not to be that guy anymore since I really like my kids and wife and I like to spare my time with them as well. But yes, uh, it might uh, happen at uh, every every single part of the development, not, in, not only in transfer, that you need to sacrifice some of your free time in order to tackle something that is quite bigger than you expected. Thank you very much. Anytime. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, guys.